Ajax Football Club, who have been very dominant in the Dutch league for the last number of seasons, are having a horrendous season this year. As you can see here with the league table, they lie in 12th place at the making of this video. They have played 11 games, they've only won 3, they've drawn 2 and they have lost 5. Looking at their results, um, you can see why they are where they are. They've lost some very, very big and important games to Feyenoord, PSV, AZ, Utrecht. Um, and then they've also went on and only drawn with some of the lesser teams in the league. So, so my goal here today, guys, is we are going to hop in with the Ajax team. We are going to go in uh, with the new system, uh, with the real, real transfers real dates all that stuff we're gonna pop in and we're gonna see what we can do with this team and hopefully we do not end up down in 12th place so one of the biggest issues i had when i first took over this club was that there was no staff anywhere everybody was gone i just walked into an empty building and there was nobody there first team reserves under 18s all gone so i had to work on getting staff into every position in the club and it took quite a lot of time to get that going Looking at my main coaching staff right now though, there's probably a lot of names there that you guys recognize. Um, so I have a very simplistic way of going about getting coaching um, people on my team. So we take Yapstam here for example. Yapstam is not great at anything other than really defending and that's kind of where I go about it. So when I go to staff search, I go in here um, and I will literally go, like it's already set up. So if I'm going for a head coach, I would sometimes just go with literally attacking or defending or tactical and technical and I look for someone that really really just excels in that one position um, and if they have other stats that complement then that's great but if not I don't really mind because I'm hiring them for a specific job right and uh, the same can be said we have Zlatan in here we have Teddy Sheringham we have Dennis Bergkamp and we have Gianluca Conte we have we have a lot of uh, people that are recognizable there right in, in the coaching part at least uh, but that's what I've done throughout the club. I've completely fixed the uh, staffing issue. And uh, we are missing a couple of scouts, but that is not a big deal at all. So just really quickly looking at the transfers out, guys, and the transfers in, like this is probably why IX are where they are. They have had a massive, massive turnover of players. Um, and then adding the staff issues on, on top of that, like that's that's a lot of stuff going on at a, at a club, right? Um, some of the big big sales that they made this season was uh, Kudos and Alvarez to West Ham, Jordan Timber to Arsenal. We have uh, Bergwin over going over to uh, Bayern Munich. We have Calvin Basie going to Fulham, um, Darani here leaving to uh, Reims. So, like as you can see, there's a lot of players that went out of Ajax, right? Um, on the left, you can see they brought in a lot of players. They brought in a lot of players. One of them players are actually my player. I literally just signed him uh, at the start of the season. It is Nikola. Milinkovic he's a brilliant brilliant defender I used him a lot in previous FMs fantastic player and I was very lucky to get him I think um at the start of this season so but other than that you have Joseph uh, Sutalo coming in uh, you have Mikadetze I, I think that's right I'm not not sure we have uh, Akpom coming in from Middlesbrough we have Carlos Borges coming in from Man City and a couple of other guys that I'm, I'm honestly I don't know who they are so lining up guys this is how I've decided to line up this season and um, it's a bit unorthodox I will grant you <laughs> but uh this yeah I, I'm, this is what we're going to try um going by the players that we have I feel like this is going to be a strong suit for us um and it's it's something that you don't see all the time and i like i like user formations that you don't see a lot so this is what we're going to run with um so i guess we will see at the end of the season how this tactic goes for us and um, throughout one thing that i will be doing that's a bit different than anyone else that does this type of stuff is every Dece every um december sort of january transfer window i'm going to come back on the 30th of december and I'm going to stay for probably the first week of the window. Um, and I'll still simulate the game. I won't I don't, I won't do any like changes or anything like that. All I'm literally doing is to see is there anyone we can pick up. Or maybe if there's someone that is trying to leave or whatever it may be, right? So that's the only thing that I'm going to do. And then after that first week, I will... Obviously, if I've signed someone or brought them in, whatever, we'll keep them for the rest of the season. And we'll see how to do. All right. So I will go ahead and I will get this first season out of here. Okay, guys, we are back after season one. 
here are two more signings that I made in January. Like I said, I would be popping in in January to see how we got on. So on the 3rd of January, I signed this guy. He looks phenomenal. Um, also, I never said it at the start. I'm only going to be signing players that come true from my scouts, by the way. So if I know of any players or anything like that, I'm not going to be going after them. This guy looks phenomenal. I've never heard of this guy before, but he looks so good. Only 19 years old looks unreal where did we sign him from again from Mets he is phenomenal guys I think you should definitely check him out in your in your own save and um, another player we signed from VFL Wolfsburg for 31 million bit expensive but at the same time I think he adds a lot to our attack the only other player that was up front was Brian Brobbery and he just was not enough up there on his own so I had to bring somebody in because we wore uh, when I when I stopped the um when I stopped the simulation in December, we were in like fourth, and I was like, we need to fix this, right? <laughs> we need to fix this. Um, because even though they've had a bad season um, in real life, the club vision was to still win the league. So it was very, very difficult. Um, you know, if we were going to be in fourth or fifth, we could have gotten sacked. Um, obviously, we did not get sacked, guys. We are still here. So we're going to hop straight in to the league table. And there we are. We are in second place. Quite a way behind Feyenoord, by the way quite a way behind 15 points to be exact that is a lot so we are going to try and make that up now in the, in the off season with a couple of transfers hopefully and we'll see how we can get on in the cup competitions guys we ended up uh, getting knocked out of the uefa cup by rangers so getting knocked out by rangers is the is where is is how our uefa cup ended but this is how it started in the group stage we went through in second place behind sporting knocking out malde and i do, i'm not even going to attempt that team from serbia i'm not even going to attempt it um in the knockout rounds we went through we beat sevilla getting through there that was that was a decent win went through on penalties but then obviously came up against rangers very disappointed to not beat rangers um nil all draw at home really not good enough honestly something we'll have to look at going forward in europe and um, in other competitions we were knocked out in the quarterfinals of the dutch cup by walwishk walwishk i've no idea no idea no <laughs> um on our way to it though in the third round we beat a volden volendam I, I, these names guys these names and then early early rounds teams i don't even know of literally the teams i don't even know of all right that is it for the cup guys and um, i want to have a quick look at um jonas wind that we brought in how did he do for us in okay he's seven in 12 that's not bad uh two of which were subs um 7.5 uh rating that's not bad at all and he's going to be our main main striker next season and um, so hopefully he'll pick up a lot more goals than that and um, going forward and um, i'm going to go ahead now guys i'm going to go ahead and do all of our preseason, see who we brought in who we've let go and get ready for season two okay guys here we are all transfers are done the window has just closed and we will go with the outs at the moment so um we sold uh branco van den boomen <laughs> to Al Hilal uh, for 20 million going up to 23 we also saw wrench I did not want to sell him but he kept every time an offer came in he was upset and upset so I ended up selling him for 13 million and um, we sold Georges as well for eight and Avila for six there's a couple of other small ones but not nothing crazy 54 million in total not um not a bad not a bad set now you see we've only one guy here but if we go back here um, and we go to the date there we go <laughs> we signed Anthony Martial on a free transfer. We also signed Thiago Almada, um, who was a wonder kid. I think it was like three FMs ago, something like that. It was it was a while ago. Uh, but scouts came back. He looked phenomenal, and we bought him for fifteen, going up to twenty. And uh, we also signed this guy from River. Um, same again, another scout report. He looks like amazing, and he's only twenty years old. Uh, his values already jumped to 47 to 64 million so that's like he just looks amazing i uh i can't believe we got him for like 20 million so <laughs> very happy with that they're the only signings we got we did go for a couple of other players but every time we went for someone newcastle real madrid or bayern munich 
were all over them every single time we went for them. So Newcastle ended up like taking like four players that we went for. But so yeah, that was a uh, that was a bit annoying. Uh, schedule wise, guys, we have played a couple of games in the league so far. Uh, we beat Zwolle 3-0, a one-all draw with Hernven. We beat Nishmagen. Nishmagen. I guess is how you say that. Two one and Hercules three two. We are conceding goals, and I'm not happy with that. But we're we're playing okay. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all we kind of have to go over, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead. I will simulate the second season, and we will see how we did. And there we go, guys. At the end of season two, we finish up in third place. We've dropped down an other position from last year, um, and we are nowhere near the uh, the top like we are so many points off again psv and fire Nord are very good um in this year's fm apparently <laughs> um as you can see on the right though jonas wind who we did sign in the first season he's our top goal scorer 24 goals and Pierga um, almada with the highest average rating and the most assists and um, if we go into the squad here and we filter by goals oh we already have it filtered by goals we see jonas wind is up there at 24 akpom who i have maybe underestimated up there with 22 goals he's done a lot this season for us so that's that's very good to see um, and Almada there with 14 goals as well with other people chipping in obviously Milankovic getting seven goals must be all from corners that's a that's not a bad tally and four from um Bosselli our new center back um going to assist then we have Almada obviously who is the top assist for us and um, we also have Sosa on the left and Sanchez on the right that makes sense the two wing backs getting up getting crosses in and uh, the, uh, the boys up front just tapping them in all right guys so in the cup competitions we did not win anything in the Dutch cup we were runners up who did we lose out to Feyenoord beat us 3-0 in the final we beat AZ in the semis. We beat PSV. That's a good win for us. We beat PSV in the quarterfinals. And in the third round, we beat that same team again that I'm not even going to pronounce this time. <laughs> uh, in the Club World Championship, we just played that. We were knocked out by uh, Leipzig. We did beat Chelsea um, in the uh, semis, in the second round, actually. Yeah, so we lost 1-0 to Leipzig. We beat Chelsea 1-0. And then in the group stage who did we have in the group stage again we had roma racing club and hengen sport i don't know who they are and um, but yeah we beat we went through in second place and unfortunately guys i did go a little bit past the window to see the champions league how we progressed that season so i'm very sorry about that and um, obviously we didn't win it <laughs> uh, psg won and ac milan were in the final that that would have been a good final i would have liked to have seen that but um yeah i i i was looking here and i seem like i've gone past the um past the threshold to go back and see like the group stages and stuff from the current season so very sorry about that um all right guys so in the transfers in january there was one player that left and that was geronimo ruli that is our goalkeeper he left for 19.75 going up to 23 to al sad anyway guys that's it i'm going to go into the preseason here and let's see who we can bring in and who wants to leave all right guys we are back all transfers are done transfer window is closed and we are ready to kick off into our third season uh transfers guys anthony martial has left um 12 million rising to nearly 15 not a bad bit of business considering we signed for free last season uh jack of medic is also leaving for 4.3 mil and there's a couple of other like young players that i just ended up selling they're not going to be used and uh, one of the biggest uh people that left um is he showing here yeah steven burgess here he has left on a free to um leon he would not sign another contract so there's not a whole lot we could do about that starting off with our first signing guys edward mendy is coming in 33 years old very very solid keeper he's going to do a great job for us i think this season and um, as a backup i will show you really quickly um jay garter is actually gone on um alone he played last season first but we have this kid he's 16 years old right he looks phenomenal right and he's going to be phenomenal phenomenal so i'm actually going to have him in the squad and have him play anytime that um mendy can't and um, i also have him set to play for the under 18 squad as well but he's just going to come in and fill in i want to give him game time it could it could backfire we could lose the results because of it but he's he's going to be phenomenal and i want to do everything i can to get him there next up guys we have leonardo barrero he is 
just what we were looking for. We were looking for a ball winning mid midfielder that could come in and be a bit better than Taylor. And this is him. He is very, very good. Um, his work rate and his tackling especially his 16 aggression determination 17 he, he, everything that i like about midfielders this guy has so i'm i was as soon as i saw him i was like yeah bring him in and um, he did cost us um 30 million and last but not least guys we have ivan fresnida fresnida from sporting uh 50 million he had a release clause of 50 and we that's what we had to pay to get him he looks so so good he's only 20 years old and he just Look at his stats, they're, they're phenomenal. Um, we have Sanchez who plays wing back for us at the moment, but I have a feeling this guy is gonna, gonna start taking that position off him very, very early in the, in the season. Um, okay, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, tactics wise, we are running the same as we have been. If it doesn't turn out well for us this season, we might, um, we might change it up in the fourth season. Um, into schedules really quick guys we have played some of the league we've had a very good start uh, we beat FC 20 3-1 we drew with PSV 1-all not disappointed with that at all AZ we beat 2-0 and Volendam we beat 4-1 if we look at the um, uh, if we look at this so in the Champions League table, guys, we have Rangers, Man United, Borussia Dortmund, Olympiacos, Barcelona, uh, Bayern Munich, and then Salzburg and Vice. That is a very, very tough group of games. Bayern, Barcelona, Borussia, Man United, even Rangers there and, and Olympiacos, they're going to be troublesome. Uh, we should be beating these two out of all of them. We should be beating them, probably even Olympiacos, but that could be still a difficult game. Um, and then obviously we'll just see where we kind of go from there. But guys, that is it. I am going to go ahead, get this season done, and hopefully we can uh, we can have a good season and maybe get a, tight, get a, a trophy of some sort. All right. And there we go, guys and gals. Another disappointing season, I think. Although not as far behind top as we have been in the past couple of seasons. Only five points off. But I do think that was more of everybody having like a poorer season. And um, because I, if I remember right, the first couple of seasons they were all like eighty plus points, whereas this season they're all under eighty. Uh, with the people with Feyenoord who won on seventy six. Saying that, we did finish in fourth. Um. Obviously, I would have liked to have won the league um, this season, but it just it just wasn't to be. Um, I can't help but notice here the top goal scorers, 35 goals by Jonas Wind. Um, going into the squad here, uh, oh, we're already on filter goals. Um, obviously, as you saw, Jonas Wind with 35, Almada with 17, and Akpom with only 12. I feel like if either of those had have gotten maybe an extra 10 goals each, or an extra 10 goals or so, we might have gotten them extra couple of results, you know, that, that would have pushed us at least into like maybe second or maybe even pushed us on to win the league. Um, but yeah, a little bit let down with the, with the goal score. What were our assists like? Almada, 19. Ooh, our new wing back, um, Fresneda, second with 13 assists and Sosa on the left with 11. That's That's been kind of how it has been throughout um, the first three seasons is them, them three guys, or them three positions, I should say, getting the most assists. Moving into competitions, guys, and we did at least win a trophy. We did win the Dutch Cup. And who did we beat in the final? Where? We beat PSV in the final 4-1. With who got the goals there? Almada got two. One was a penalty. Taylor picked one up. And you're on board. Who, got... who is he? Oh, yeah, you're the young. Why was he playing up front? Interesting. That's interesting now that they played him up front. But I, I, I don't complain because we did win the final 4-1. Um, did we knock out any other good teams? We knocked out Cambor 5-1. Um, in the semi, we beat Den Haag. Yeah, we, we had a fairly easy run the whole way through. I have to I have to admit. <laughs> um, in the Champions League, we were knocked out by Real Madrid. Where are we here? Oh, knocked out 3-2. Wow, that's very, very unlucky. So we we only... Oh, that's so unlucky. We got two away from home and everything there. And, oh, that's that's very unlucky. Um, league phase, we didn't do that well then. Eh, it's, not, it's not that bad. We were in 13th. Um, 
we had a very hard group, so I actually want to see who we beat. So we beat Young Boys and Strasbourg. I did think we beat them. We beat Bayern Munich 4 0 and Olympiacos 2 1. We drew at Rangers and then we lost to Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, and Man United. I see. Okay, okay. All right. Um, the champions. Oh, that's the wrong button. It looks like PSG have won. Oh, the P the final is yet to be played. It's a PSG and a Bayern final. We be four 0 That's kind of that's kind of funny. <laughs> um, okay, guys. So this is where my video is going to. Uh, be a bit different than what other people do on YouTube and um, with their five-year rebuilds so technically I am only doing three-year rebuilds and what I'm going to do now is I am going to go ahead and resign as manager and I'm going to simulate two more seasons I'm going to see who comes in I'm going to see what tactic they use and I'm going to see you know have they done any better than us and um, can they go on and win the league um, I think with a couple more additions they should go on and win the league but you know it's very hard to tell um, the league is a lot closer now I feel like um, than it was a couple of seasons ago when Ajax were just pure dominance um, but yeah that is it guys I am going to go ahead and resign I will simulate two more seasons we will have a look at the transfers and the league table when we come back okay guys here we are two seasons later um, on the way by the first season I did stop literally the only thing i checked was champions league and um, i wanted to see if where they progressed to they ended up getting knocked out by newcastle in the um quarterfinals and newcastle went on to play psg in the final again i actually don't know which of them won because i just started vacationing again so let's type in ajax here and we'll see what we get up here ajax first in uh no, they won the league did they They did win the league. And Feyenoord. Oh no, wait. 20. Oh, because we're not fully we're not fully finished because there's still um There's still play playoff stuff going on for promotion, is there? Well European places even. Yeah, there is. Okay, so the, so Ajax have won the league. <laughs> of course they have. Ajax have won the league both seasons that I was not there. Of course they did. Okay, let's, um, <laughs> that's just typical, isn't it? Isn't that just typical? Alrighty, so before we look at any formations, I want to see if they've won anything else. So let's go to the Dutch Cup. Defending champions are PSV and Feyenoord won it last season. So Ajax have not won the Cup um, since it was with us. When did Ajax get knocked out? Um lost this wallet that's a that's a poor loss there i have to i have to kind of say um champions league how did they do this season title holders are newcastle so last season ix got knocked out by newcastle and newcastle went on and won the whole thing out and um, in the league phase where are they there they are they're in 19 so they did go through but into the knockout parts here they knocked out Juventus on penalties. Very interesting. And um, they then... Oh, they then got knocked out by Arsenal, who are in the final again. Another English team knocks out Ajax, and they're into the final. Very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Okay, so next thing to have a quick look at is their manager, Oliver Glasner. I don't know who this guy is. Um, Overview? No, not overview. Career stats. Oh no, that's his playing days, right? Yeah, he's with SV Reed. Milestones. There we go. So, oh yeah, so he was with SV Reed. He retired. He then got a job with LSK. Won the league with them, got them promoted. He then went on to Frankfurt and won the UEFA for the league with them. That's in real life, so that's that's pretty damn good. And um, he then joined Club Bruges, who he left for Ajax. Okay, so he hasn't a ton of jobs, but he did win the UEFA Cup with Frankfurt. That's that's very impressive. Um. Okay. Um. Let's have a look at the transfers actually first. So if we go back to 25, 26, yeah, this is when we stopped. So did he sell anybody else? No, nobody else left, but they did he this is not a signing I made. Who is this guy? Arthur Cabral. Cabral. He's a striker. Okay, so he brought in another striker. So he didn't have faith in a, in wind, even though he had scored 35 goals um, in the season that I left. That's very strange to sign him. 
in the next transfer window he sold oh that starts our defender he sold joseph sutelo that's very weird i sold him he then sold carlos borges and a couple of other guys that you know they're they were probably going to never make it with me either brian Broberry is a bit of a weird one to sell in my opinion i i always like brian Broberry. um but selling joseph is a big deal for me um they brought in fernando on a free oh he's a okay he's a regen we're gonna have to take a proper look at him in a sec and um, philip stankovic from inter milan another goalkeeper okay for 10 million for this guy uh, is a free transfer by the way we've got ivan illich on a free transfer as well okay another midfielder facundo torres 28 year old another attacking midfielder and asan i don't even know how to say that guy's name but another midfielder he brought he just he just brought a midfielders that season yeah, but hey it worked it worked because they went on and won the league okay and then in the season just gone holy transfers out who did he sell oh he sold sivert manesk oh my uh, manswerk even to man city uh facundo torres who he just bought the season before he sold for 40 and um, Ethan Boutro, he is a youngster that I had um, kept keeping because I knew he would uh, either sell for a lot or would be used, and he ended up selling him for a lot. And um, there's just a lot of a lot of a lot of young players basically being sold out here. Wow, he brought in so much money that season. That's very very good by him. There's Sanchez out as well. The uh, the right back, Kenneth Taylor went to um, Alcagia, Alcagia, I guess. Wow, I can't believe how much he... Oh, look how much he sold! Guys, I've been so focused on the transfers out. I, I didn't realise how many people he bought in. Holy! Look at this. Oh, he brought in Donny van der Beek. Wow, bringing Donny back to Ajax. That's a bold move. He brought in Filippo Mane. Wow. Who is this guy? Lucas... He looks, he looks decent. He's only 24. Who is the most expensive one he brought in? It would be Valentinos Valerianos. What is that name, bruh? Oh, he's a, re <laughs> he's a regen. Can we not see his stats? Oh, that's sad that we can't see his stats fully. Um, From now on, when I do these, guys, I will maybe play with masking off. Um, In my own personal saves, I play with it on because I like it. I just like it that way. But for these videos, I will play with it um, off from, from now on. So we can see like so many regens because that's really strange that we can't see his stats. All right, guys, massive signings and massive sales for Ajax. That's a huge transfer window there at the end. Um, tactics wise, guys, they are running a 4 3 2 1. He's playing wind on the right and Almeida on the left. I mean, it's working for him. They also have this kid here up front, 20 year old Dutch, valued at 15 to 45 already he has 16 goals last season so he's he's doing he's putting in work i'm uh, i'm very disappointed that i didn't i didn't turn off player masking it's such a stupid move on on a save like this um but yeah it is what it is milinkovic still going strong fresnita is going to be there for a little bit and that is it guys that is it that is the attempt at rebuilding ix it did not go to plan on my end i am um, I feel like if I had changed to a different formation, I probably would have done a bit better. Saying that though, the, the players that Oliver Glasner brought in were phenomenal. Some of them, some of them I don't agree with, and, and some of the cells that he did were not ones that I would have made myself, especially the, the defender to uh, Newcastle. But you know, it brought him in a lot of money, and he was able to you know go on and sign more players with that. So you know, there's you can see it from both sides. Anyway, guys, that is it. I am gonna go and look up another team that I can maybe do a video on, and I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed, please do throw a like on the video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this save, and if you like the format where I play three seasons and then I simulate the last two with someone else in charge. Anyway, guys, that's it. Have a good one, and bye bye.